Hello and welcome to Inside Out Southwest, stories and investigations from where you live. Tonight is evacuation, the last gasp solution to pollution. I mean, do you have to put up with that every day? All day, seven days a week. Or are bossy cars the answer? It's gone right up to the top. I just got a, tell I just got a telling off there. Revving the engine, holding the gear, and she's got a warning. Also tonight, the Southwest fishermen out at sea and on drugs. Their job is dangerous enough as it is. Why make it far worse? Miss, I tell you what, you don't know what you've lost until you've lost it. And we discover the literary ghosts of a hidden Dorset village. It's just so much fun to meet all the people and to learn the history, and you really feel like you're back in time. Hello, I'm Gemma Woodman, and welcome to Inside Out Southwest. Air pollution is a global problem. It's a silent killer. The main cause? Coal dust from power stations and car exhaust. As a lung cancer doctor, I've seen an increase in patients in recent years. Governments are taking action. Public concern has forced the Chinese government to begin investing heavily in renewable energy. And in one part of the world, the most drastic solution yet. Evacuation has been considered. Where? Well, here. North Cornwall. And no one can quite believe it. I don't know how it would work. The whole point of a town centre is it's for the people. I can't see anyone wanting to demolish half a Camelford just to make it less pollution friendly, shall we say. I can't imagine anyone along this road wanting to move. Not everyone thinks it's ludicrous. Depends where they might relocate us to. <laughs> Somewhere a bit more prosperous and busy might not be a bad thing. However surprising it might be, evacuation was considered. If we went down that road, then it would either be to compulsory purchase to move people out into another property in the locality, um, or possibly even to demolish a, a property, which is actually causing the pinch point to actually open the road up. In reality, we think we can solve the problem without taking that ultimate step, but we don't intend to demolish anybody's house. Camelford is one of seven areas in Cornwall where air quality is causing concern. I mean, do you have to put up with that every day? All day, seven days a week. Andy Shaw has lived here for 40 years. So has the pollution got worse over the years? The volume of traffic is tenfold. I wonder what your lungs look like, Andy. Pretty rubbish, I expect, but there you go. <laughs> difficult to actually have a conversation here, even on your own front doorstep. You can't. But Camelford seems an unlikely pollution hotspot. So what's the cause? Well, in no particular order, you've got a main road, traffic lights, narrow streets, HGVs, and in the summer, it's even busier. That's lots of vehicles doing lots of revving. OK, so when you put your foot on the accelerator, you're sending a message to the engine. You're saying, I want more power. And, and for the engine, that means it has to generate more torque. And to generate torque, it needs fuel and it needs air. But the more fuel that it needs, the more emissions it creates. It's as simple as that. Mark Roberts' company has designed a device that monitors your engine and helps keep your emissions down. And I've had one fitted to my car. It uses sort of Formula One style data analytics to, to listen to the engine and, and, and get information straight out of the engine and communicate it with you. So it has the green, amber and red lights to, to show you where in the sweet spot you are. It gives you that audible nudge when you start going towards the edge and it, and it helps you drive in the most efficient um, and low emission way possible. Mark's going to monitor my journey. So we're just coming into Camelford now, and my little device is telling me that my driving is perfect. I wouldn't expect anything less, frankly. She seems to be driving pretty well at the moment. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm on a bit of a hill. So I'm going to have to rev to get up this hill. Oh, yeah, and it's gone well, right up to the top. And she's got a warning. She's got a warning because she's pushed the engine further than perhaps was necessary. I just got a telling off there. That told me. She managed to improve her driving, not get a second warning, so that's great. Whereas the majority of drivers would have just kept gunning it up that hill, holding the gear, kicking out more pollution. And I've gone into the orange again. Just driving through the town, you can really get an idea of how much pollution must be coming out of all the cars going through Camelford every time you have to pull away at those lights. Definitely not ideal if you live here. 86% in green, which is good, but there's a big chunk of amber. There's 13% in amber. Now, that would undoubtedly have been that bit where she was having to give it a lot of gas to get up the hill. That's where the, the pollution is caused. So what's in all those fumes? People breathing in these exhaust fumes are exposed to nitrogen dioxide uh, and fine particulates. Ah, it's starting to increase now. That's funny. Dr John Rewertz is an air pollution expert at Plymouth University. Nitrogen dioxide irritates the um, linings of the airways and the lungs. There are very clear associations with things like bronchitis in children, increased rates of asthma in both children and adults. The other one we're really worried about, as well as NO2, is fine particulates. They go into the deepest parts of the lungs. They're so small that they can also pass into the bloodstream and be carried all around the body. Nitrogen dioxide is measured using these little tubes. And in Camelford, the levels are too high. The council's putting together a plan to reduce pollution but all options cost, and evacuation is expensive. So how much would it cost to buy all of the properties in this street? Well, we asked an estate agent, and they told us a cool £15 million. Pounds. So if that's not going to happen, what else is on the table? Well, everything from better public transport to encouraging cycling is being considered. Meanwhile, the locals know what they want. Build a bypass. Definitely. Should have done it years ago, years and years ago. But bypasses can be costly and controversial too. Remember him? I mean, if I wrote a letter to my MP, would I have achieved all this? Would you lot be here now? I think not. The kind of money needed to do this sort of thing is harder than ever to come by. Certainly a bypass would be vastly more expensive than knocking down a house. That's going to cost tens of millions of pounds. It's something that the government would need to fund. And the reality is that it's not going to be happening. Crediton in Mid-Devon. They did build a new road here. The town was exceeding air pollution limits, so the council coughed up, spending nearly eight million on a link road designed to stop, well, this. So do you think there's less cars coming down here because of the link road? A little bit, maybe, but no, the majority still comes through Exeter Road. Joan Farley lives in the heart of Crediton's pollution zone. Every day because, you do this, yeah, do you? Yeah, because if not, I mean, you can see how filthy this is. That's it. Oh, my word, that's absolutely black. There you go. I mean, that's pretty disgusting. It's disgusting. Yeah, and you have to do that yeah. every day. Yeah. yeah. The latest data from Crediton shows a mixed picture. In most places, pollution has fallen to safe levels. But the monitoring station opposite Jones House is still recording high amounts of nitrogen dioxide although the council says these readings aren't completely reliable. I still get the same for black on my window while I'm walking up the road. I get it in my throat, which a lot of people do. It's not good enough, is it? So a new road doesn't always work out well for everyone. Joan gave me two little parting gifts. 
cotton wipes from her bathroom window and front door, showing that there clearly still is pollution here. But frankly, <coughs> my lungs could tell you that. However, the council does say that pollution levels have dropped and it's just going to take a little while for the link road to properly bed in. And remember that gadget helping me to drive more smoothly? Well, it reduced my fuel usage by 8%, saving both people's lungs and my wallet. Although I probably haven't got enough to buy a whole street just yet.